Climate change is taking a dramatic toll on the Colorado River system that provides water to nearly 40 million people in seven states. Last month, the federal government declared a water shortage for the first time ever. That's due to an extended summer drought and increasing water demands brought about by population growth. Water cutbacks have been announced announced for Arizona and Nevada. Experts warn that water restrictions in Colorado could also be on the way. Dr. Becky Bollinger uncovered the history of the Colorado River system and why it was destined to fail in her article for the Washington Post. And Dr. Bollinger joins me now. She's the assistant state climatologist for Colorado. Thanks for being here. So water managers have long recognized the overuse of the river. How does the system currently work for getting and splitting this water? So a lot of it is based on how uh, things were many, many years ago, almost 100 years ago, and that this water would be divided equally among what is known as the upper basin states and the lower basin states. And unfortunately, that was uh, determined based on a, a little bit of a wetter period in time that we no longer see on a regular basis. So the idea that the upper basin states where the majority of that water starts as snow has to be delivered downstream to the lower basin states, uh, it's a little bit difficult uh, when it becomes more infrequent that you're going to get uh, that amount that, that was originally estimated way back in 1922. Hmm. Well, the system was created specifically to get Colorado through drought years. Since it isn't working, what really needs to change yeah, so I think uh, initially it, it seemed like a really good idea. You you have these large reservoirs, and when you can stockpile in the wet years, uh, and then when there's a dry year that comes up, you can send that water down as needed and not worry about putting stress uh, when you're in a drought because that water is saved. Uh, really seems like a, a good idea. Unfortunately, when you have uh, this increasing frequency of droughts that we've experienced since the turn of the century, uh, ever since then, the large reservoirs have not been able to completely recover to the levels they were originally at before the turn of the century. So each drought brings them down even further, and then each recovery period isn't quite enough to bring it back up. So what needs to happen in the future is deciding um, how we're going to equally allocate that water without uh, expecting the same amount of water that, that we expected uh, from uh, 1920s, 100 years ago. Yeah. Well, the current Colorado River guidelines will expire in 2026. Will the state agree on new policies to fight this crisis? Yeah, the challenge is, is every state is, is very passionate about solving this problem, but uh, there is uh, continued disagreements that happen between the lower basin states and the upper sure. basin states. And so there needs to be some agreement that comes uh, between these states. And I think uh, one major component of that is that every state is going to have to accept that there will be less water in the future. And so everybody's gonna have to continue to equally divide it as was originally designed in the beginning, but it's going to be less for everyone than what it used to be. And, and I think that future plans are, are going to have to figure that out and hopefully um, all the states will be able to come to an agreement on that. So if everybody's looking at taking less water, we're still faced with uh, this year. So what could a dry and warmer winter mean for Colorado? Yeah, unfortunately, if we have a, another warmer and drier winter like we just had last year, that could have really devastating downstream impacts uh, on these reservoirs come next spring. Um, it's not a guarantee that that is what's going to happen. Um, they are leaning towards saying that things are going to be uh, 
more likely drier than average than wetter than average. Um, I do have one uh, bit of hope in that since we've had a more active monsoon season in Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, and Colorado, uh, this uh, fall, uh, late summer going into fall, that that will help the soils before that snowpack starts for the winter. Um, and then the hope is that, that we can at least get to near average which uh, will definitely help for those uh, springtime flows feeding into the, all the reservoirs. And unfortunately, if we have another year like last year, we're going to be looking at even further shortages for the entire system come next summer. You say you hope that that you hope uh, for the best, and I know that there's 40 million people across seven states that are hoping right alongside you, Dr. Becky Bollinger. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.